ability, which is, as you know, that DNA markers are uh, very much not uh, affected by the environment. Then here I have to go only the study of the, some of the things like marker start backers breeding, which is very much important vegetable as well, particularly for developing the different resistance line in, with respect to uh, in the crops like tomato, the cucumber. Many people have worked in the worldwide, but in India, there is very, very less work has been done. So that already you have know about this marker start backers breeding. I will not go for and touch upon that. Uh, gene pyramiding is also very important in vegetable, as you mentioned about this uh, success story in case of tomato. If you know the tomato, uh, uh, earlier we don't have a, a varieties which is resistance to tomato leaf curl viruses. But now we have some of the varieties have evolved in, in the 2017 onwards. Some of the varieties are really good, particularly in case of Arka Ved, now the multiple resistance variety. In case of your uh, uh, cucumber also, some of the varieties which is resistance to powdery mildew also developed through this mark started bidding. Uh, gene pyramiding, as you mentioned, that is da done in case of uh, some of the crops, uh, mostly in case of tomato and uh, uh, cucumber. But in India, it's very uh, concerned. The marker start breeding is very, very infant stage. Nobody has worked on this particular crop. But it can also work for this early generation marker start breeding, by which uh, it's very important for us to develop the new lines of the new varieties with the different type of quality attributes. Uh, now, uh, the marker start breeding cannot be done as alone because if you go for only one time of uh, genotyping of the plants in the F3 or F5 or maybe in the across populations or BC2 or BC3 populations, you cannot get some type of successful in different traits. So you have to combine both the mark uh, markers as well as the phenotypic selection. So sometimes both the things are to marker set selection as well as the phenotypic selections we have to go for simultaneously then only you can get the improvement of the some of the vegetables. So that you have to get uh, maximize in the genetic gain and re level of recombinations between the QTLs and the markers will be more and reduce the population size if you go for marker set selection. So these are some of the benefits you already know. Now we come to the example where we have uh, the dent on the uh, particularly for this marker state wedding in tomato, which is you know that uh, most of the cases is started in AVRDC, that is in Taiwan. They work on the different species of marker state breeding in tomato and they use different species like, uh, uh, like uh, Solanum uh, herbochetes, Chilians, uh, then uh, Solanum pimpinellifolium is very important for us, which is uh, actually important for vitamin C content as well as their resistance to the tomato leaf colony virus. Similarly, in case of uh, lead blight resistance, in case of solanum, that is in solanum, pimpinellifolium is very important. So they have their genes already there in the wild species. So they introgressed in the different lines of solanum uh, lycopasticum. So that is the, their uh, esculentum. Now, uh, in this case, uh, what you hear is some of the study, I already mentioned that some of the studies work in IHR, some of the study work in IIVR, and some of the work is also studied in IRI. So that only I will give the example. Other things you can read it from books at which is available to you only. Uh, now this is the methods we go for screening. So screening is very important for any type of disease infestations you go for. Phenotyping is very important. No, if you are not going for phenotyping properly, I don't think you can have a better understanding of the genes or better, better understanding of your marker status selection which is very important. So here we uh, people have started working on this uh, 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 tomato leaf curl, uh, viruses that you know that three types of viruses already exist there, uh, mo more than three types, there will be nine or ten types of viruses are there in different strains like Bangalore virus, New Delhi virus, Palampur virus, now Raipur virus, Jaipur virus. So there are a lot of viruses are there in case of strains in case of your tomato which is very important or challenging for us to develop the new lines. Okay? So these are the methods of inoculum by which we can uh, go for this uh, geno uh, phenotyping of this uh, uh, particularly for the uh, tomato leaf called uh, New Delhi virus uh, which is mostly as uh, you know that we have two types of viruses the strain type one is monopartite and another is bipartite that is already I think you know you might be knowing those are working. So monopartite uh, we this generally seen in case of uh, South Indian condition that is in Bangalore you have monopartite virus here is the Bangalore virus but in case of New Delhi virus it is a bipartite <coughs> type of virus. Okay, so that uh, depends on then the genes we have to uh, isolate it for the different species also totally different. So that is as you, as you know that there are six genes are now already there in tomato with respect to different species concerned TY1 to TY6 genes and TY1 and TY3 they are mostly similar but in case of TY2 and TY3 which is very very important for us to develop 
against the tomato leaf called newsily virus. So it is very important for us. So you should know in that particular in case of tomato. Uh, so that's uh, you have to assess the diversity uh, based on or the severity of the different uh, species or uh, your lines. So you have to screen properly. Uh, their symptoms also you should know what type of symptoms will be there, there in case of uh, viruses. And based on that you have to uh, identify also you have to score them which is very important. Now the strategies are total different to so two strategy we can go for back cross scheme or we can go for cross uh, uh, scheme as you mentioned I already taught you by uh, different crops also here also the same thing also you can apply but for the back cross scheme we have to develop the integrous lines uh, through this particular or gene pyramiding with respect to the back cross breeding in case of tomato. Now if you see the screening uh, methods you have a variety like panjachuara which is highly susceptible. So that you can see here and you can have a different strains of viruses like tom tomato leaf called Bangalore viruses. Here we have TY1, uh, we have when, when you incorporate the introgus that particular genes, we have some resistance lines you can develop. But we can have this TY2 or TY3, then you have a combined effect of your both monopatite and biotic virus. So that is very important for us. So they have screened many of the lines and also introgus the lines with the simple way of marker state bidding. And already there are a lot of markers already we developed in this particular aspect of TY. All the genes is concerned from TY into TY6. Already the genes or the gene based markers have already been developed in the respect of this particular tomato leaf called nuclear viruses. Uh, so that already I mentioned that screening procedure and then the next one is that they make some hybrids by which suppose you have a, some inbreds. So you can also develop like Arka Aved, if you uh, might have seen that the background is totally different, the lines are they will totally inbreds, they develop is totally different. Then cross it and both are showing resistance to different diseases. So the simple way process of by making a hybrids also with respect to one particular disease resistance, another resistance and you can make a cross and you can develop the multiple resistance in the hybrids. So this is the very important which is done in case of Arka Aved. And then uh, many of the cases also people tried in IAV here like uh, Kasi Oman they developed which is also resistant to tomato leaf called nuclear viruses. So to Kasi Oman was a very uh, good varieties in uh, particular in the northern belt. So they used to have uh, that's materials or the, the, the source material they got it from the IAV DC also and they tried their own variety like Kasi Oman. Uh, Oman to develop this uh, resistant uh, varieties in this uh, respect. And also they also incorporate or interrogate the lines of TY5 uh, genes. So and then combine the totally resistant type of lines they developed in this particular uh, tomato crop. Now in IRE also we have used uh, different donors uh, with respect to the genes uh, led to bacterial resistance, with respect to uh, uh, lead blight, with respect to the tomato leaf colony viruses, CMB, so uh, cucumber mosaic viruses. So that uh, gray leaf uh, spot, heat tolerance and all things are there in case of ABDC lines and many of the people are working for introducing our own variety in case of IRE, we have lot different varieties we developed and now we have started for introducing these lines with different, uh, different resistance to different biotic and abiotic stresses. So that also did the genotyping in the population and we have also developed some of the F6 advanced generation some of the lines which is really performing well with respect to the tomato leaf called nuclear viruses. So that is uh, there uh, uh, already some of the lines are in the trial. Now coming to the another crop is a cucumber which is a very important crop for me because I work started in here in cucumber as also in vitro growth. Uh, most of the works uh, also I worked in the University of Wisconsin that is in uh, USA and uh, some of the works also we started here in working here. Uh, now uh, gynesis line is very important, gynesis is very, gynesism important in case of vegetables because if you have gynesism definitely you have to, don't have to go for uh, that hand pollination for making the crosses, okay. That is like your uh, male sterility, today you are talking about male sterility, similarly the gynesism there in case of cucumber. As well as we, uh, the first time we developed this uh, gynesis line in vitro good. And here there is no need for any pollination. You have to because many of the people or the uh, farmers or this private company, they have to go for the pollination by hand, which is really very cumbersome as well as very labor in intensive. That's why if you have a gynesis line in one female parent and male parent to grow simultaneously, there will be a crossing by the insect and you will get the hybrids very easily. So you can reduce the cost of production of the hybrid. So it is very important in case of both cucumber and HLS, in case of your bitter gourd, any cucumber bits is very important for that. Uh, so in that case, uh, uh, in generally in case of uh, lines, uh, 
uh, what you have the gynesis line is developed in uh, in the in the western uh, country particularly gy g421 and gy14 which is in cucumber which is uh, having the gynesis line but there are only drawback is there in case of indian lines is totally different from the uh, your uh, lines of the uh, um, uh, western countries because they have um, uh, used for the pickle purpose and they have to go for only single harvesting but here we have to pluck the fruits then new fruits are coming then you can also uh, have more number of uh, branches and all things will be there and another important thing is they have a dark green color of cucumber but we prefer to have a light green co uh, cucumber varieties so lateral branches will be more in, in our case but lateral branches will be a very less at least one or two may be there or may, there will not be any lateral branches because they have to go for mechanical harvesting but here we are doing for the plucking or for the slicing cucumber and we have a slicing cucumber and or salad purpose and they have a pickle a pickling cucumber for pickle purpose so these lines i got it from us which is gy14 and gy421 which is having these characters which is having a single or uh, only one uh, there one or two branches not more than that but we have a branches about four to five six branches are there in our own pusa nabin uh, punjab nabin and pusa uh, pusa barkha and uh, uh, some of the varieties of pusa udai so this we have to integrate and that uh, schematic uh, presentations i made it here that you have to go for in bcu and uh, back cross population and then develop uh, this marcaster selection by which you have to go for foreground selection and then by the foreground selection we can develop uh, uh, the lines or uh, the materials and then you go for background selections with the different markers and we have taken the lot of uh, uh, markers particularly for background selections and these markers those who are you are used particularly for the as it is a cucumber genome sequence is available so we use the markers which is known markers which is which is uh, 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 means uh, linked to the uh, target traits particular lateral branches it is already there there are four cuticles are there which is already uh, in the in the public domain which can we which there we have the growth of the plants so vegetative growth maybe uh, the single branch or two branch or three branch or highly vigorous so that also markers will be added QTLs have been already reported in case of your uh, cucumber and there is no problem to get this marker so based on that you have to select the foreground background selections also not only the foreground selection markers are already established but if you have the markers particularly for the different traits in the quality traits in case of cucumber then definitely it is also available so we have to choose the markers really which uh, have contribute uh, having the link to the trait of interest then only your programs will be speedy okay otherwise you have to go for a long time you have to see that which are the polymer more polymer markers then you have to go for a huge number of markers particularly for the background selections but here there is no need of having huge number of markers for the background selections if you know the markers for the target traits the quality like fruit length and diameter ratio ld ratio that quality the seed cavity thickness all the markers are available in case of cucumber so based on that particular uh, uh, that sequence available you can also take your own markers and the sister markers it already available so that you can use it utilize for your uh, even for the background selection so that is uh, important and we did it the same way and we also developed uh, the number of uh, inbred lines with respect to this one and we also have a very good uh, response uh, to the that is a recurrent parent, uh, geno uh, geno uh, uh, genome recovery in respect to the different crops and different um, varieties and we can find the improved pusa uh, uh, udai improved pusa uh, uh, pant khira also we developed which is monoecious earlier it was monoecious line monoecious means there are a lot of female flowers uh, male flowers that is 30 30 is to 1 30 male flowers and only one female flowers now we converted them 100% gynesis that is 100% female flower as i mentioned this female flowers is more definitely the productions and productivity will be more so that way we have a definitely the hybrids also the combinations will be there and definitely we have predominantly gynesis hybrids we can develop which is having more number of female flowers by which you can have a productivity of the per plant productivity will be more in case of cucumber so that is our uh, in, in, in means uh, most important things we got it from this one so now we converted our own lines to this gynesis line based on the marker uh, selection and within three uh, years uh, three to four years we developed four lines of different background with respect to the different varieties with respect to the barca which is also resistance to uh, tomato uh, so yes tomato leaf curl viruses and cmb and uh, now this tomato leaf curl virus is there in every crop and if you see these vegetables like tomato if you go 
go for all the crops of cucurbits also now also rampant with this tomato leaf color viruses. So some of the lines also we developed with respect to this one. Another important is a target leaf spot resistance by uh, in case of your uh, this is in also uh, cucumber also you work in this one. So the important is that you have to go for standardization of protocol uh, particularly for the uh, pathology point of view but I am not a pathologist but we have developed some of the uh, techniques we have through which you can go for rapid screening of the methods of uh, for this ta target leaf spot, uh, leaf spot, leaf spot in case of your uh, cucumber. So that also we, uh, we developed then we have seen that uh, uh, some of the lines uh, we use that is uh, Wisconsin lines there are US, uh, US lines are there and we also use the growth chambers if you have growth chambers then it is very easy or the simple technique by which because they need a particular specific temperature humidity particular for the growth of the different uh, fungal fungus and bacteria also you know that you know. So if you have that particular uh, standardization of the techniques is it easy for screening. And if you go for field screening that you know that you have to have all sort of uh, things and a lot of space, a lot of materials you have to develop. But here what happened you have to go for only in the in, in case of your uh, small uh, uh, chamber that you can go for 100, 100 plants of screening we can, you can do it easily with respect to fungus or bacteria if you concern. So that also uh, we did it. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, we also uh, perform the inoculations methods when you have to go for inoculate them either in the cotyledon stage or in the in the broadly stage. So based on that we also inoculated them and you can also screen them and we found many of these elite uh, lines which is also resistance to this uh, uh, in case of your uh, target lips, uh, lip spot. So then you classify them based on that uh, you have to score them. Uh, based on your the symptoms occur so we have to score them and we can also develop some of the lines uh, with respect to the resistance to this uh, uh, target leaf spot and then we score with this F2, F2 derived F3 preparations we have to go for phenotyping and also we can do it in the chamber if you have a chamber about 400 to 500 plants you can screen very easily okay. So one you have to have one tray and that tray more, more than 50 uh, plants you can grow them. Then you can maintain the humidity by putting some of the plastics cover and you can also maintain the humidity inside and the temperature inside in a growth chamber. So 300, 400 plants very easily within, within uh, one month you, think you can screen 300, 400 plants in this particular chamber. So that is uh, based on that you can also see that. But another important thing is that uh, the genes to get it the source is very important. And here we can uh, we are we got it uh, different uh, things. Here uh, we got the source. Some of the sources when the background changes, you have a gen the genetics of this inheritance also changes. Some are controlled by the single gene. Okay, if you change the background, and that is there, and some are having dominant genes, and some are also recessive genes. In that depends on the sources from where you got it. So based on that also you can have a multiple sources of resistance with respect to the particular diseases as it is in case of a target leaf spot also you can get it in different crops in that particular way. Uh, so we did it that one and then we go for QTL mapping and we can find that in case of chromosome 6 uh, some markers which is directly are flanked to this target leaf spot uh, uh, disease. And then in other uh, populations I mentioned about this 99930 uh, and 7012 these are the different backgrounds from which we got uh, converted our lines to the target leaf spot resistance and some are we are also getting the uh, dominant uh, traits in this uh, respect. So I will not uh, cover this one but uh, the identification of markers is really very important particularly for the different genes particularly for the recessive genes if it is controlled by that one is very important if a dominant it is not so much of important but for background information if you go for background selection if a dominant traits it is also very easy to get particularly in case of your uh, uh, gynosis, uh, gynosis is concerned in case of uh, uh, cucumber. Uh, now we also did the association mapping with respect to the powdery mildew resistance as you mentioned that there are a lot of markers has been generated or mapped uh, particularly for this particular traits of powdery mildew but still today they are not stable so much because the resolutions is not so enough particularly for if you go for biomechanical mapping system or uh, through the markers restrictions is not so uh, easy. 
and also you have to go for cutal identification uh, is also totally different. In some backgrounds it is giving different story and some other backgrounds it is giving different story. So it is very very difficult to have actually the QTLs which really to identify them through this marker. So now we have to develop their own techniques or people also tried with some of these uh, particularly guas is very important nowadays and people work to go for this type of uh, experiment with the guas experiment and they got the, some of the alleles and identified different genes with respect to in, in case of your and there you can have a true pictures about this uh, background of that particular lines ok. So that uh, I, I think uh, you know about this guas it is already been taught no guas so I do not think it will be important for me also. Uh, here also I already mentioned about this uh, scoring of our phenotyping is very important. If you are not scoring properly as I mentioned that is totally misnomous. You will not get a true picture or two QTL identified with respect to the marker situation. So, which is very important uh, for us, but in India you have very much of uh, not so much of uh, inputs are provided to the universities as well as the different institutions. It is very very difficult for a particular screening of the material. We have about cucumber about uh, as you I, I mentioned that cucumber is only in India. So, we have about uh, 400 500 accessions are there in our gen bank uh, those are not repetitive, but still we are not screened how, about 100 uh, those are not repetitive it is very very less amount of materials or genotypes we screen. Similarly, in case of bitter gourd in case of any other crops if you concerned many people uh, from here uh, when we have a cucumber. Uh, uh, in 1994 the people uh, US from US they came here and they took cucumber jamplasm about 600 jamplasm from, uh, from India and we lost all the jamplasm, but they have there in the uh, means introductions uh, uh, plant genome introductions uh, they have already uh, put it there about 600 accession and most of the gene, uh, work what uh, genes they work from this Indian uh, genotypes. If you say I, I work there in US and uh, when I, I came here and I search for this introduction I have to get it from US. So, this is the very peculiar thing in India. We lost most of the our germplasm. If your germplasms are not there what to do with this resistance breeding? What to do with the improvement program? So, many of the things we have to conserve ourselves, which is very important that you are not doing. So, in case of melons if you have only one introduction they have a fujaimul resistance, they have virus resistance they got it in, in, in US. So, now we are procuring that materials for us for the improvement of these melons. So, that is another painful things for uh, uh, us, but anyway so these are the materials you have to screen and uh, that way you can also score them which is very important and scale them. Then the genes also have a different uh, things in the cotyledon stage the, the genes are different in case of your full true leaf stage the genes are also different even for the hypocotyl also powder resistance genes are also different. So, in that case you have to screen properly which I mentioned is very important both in uh, cotyledon stage in hypocotyl hypo stage also in the true leaf stage that also we screen it properly and then we go for SNP genotype. So, if you can see that particular locations you can uh, find that in the same tree or the different tree if you put it in the one chamber you can find the variations in the in the in the in the uh, level of infestations of this powder mildew in case of cucumber. Now, these lines also we are utilizing particularly for resistance to this uh, powder mill resistance in, in case of cucumber and uh, then another important thing is that uh, uh, Opal you have time no, no problem it is ok. So, now this marker step back cross selections also we did it in case, in case of cucumber to develop the new lines with respect to some of the lines of China uh, that is cucumis hystrix which is very important lines which is resistance to powder mildew also lot of multiple, uh, multiple branches also sequential fruiting. So, that also is used here then we have a scoring them based on the uh, vigorous plant growth we have already known markers particularly for the growth of the plants and the and the cuticles known for this uh, laterally branches which are used to develop the new lines having the sequential fruiting habit also resistance to the different to nematode resistance the uh, target leaf load resistance and also powder mold resistance. So, uh, another uh, important crop is in cauliflower. So, that also we did it in here in IRA that is the resist particularly for OR gene you might be knowing about the OR gene as is golden rice we have that the golden rice is there similar in case cauliflower cauliflower is very less amount of the beta carotene about 0 0.5 uh, microgram per gram, but if you have increased uh, from that particular cauliflower lines which is the, uh, taken it from uh, California Davis they have a natural uh, 
mutant lines from where, where we got this beta carotene OR gene and uh, we also incorporated through this marker street breeding. Now we have about the lines which is called as Kusa Kasari beta 1 which is a variety of uh, in case of your cauliflower which is having 10 microgram of your uh, this one that beta carotene per gram of your edible person. We also work in capsicum that is the most important disease in the leaf called viruses. So that is also important. So we have some resistant lines and we map them also we develop some of the uh, we have also the information about the SNPs and then we that SNPs we are going for developing the PCR based markers. I am quick because I have to we have some programs so sorry for that. Uh, so it is in the last but it should be given a one hour then only you can have a lot of things are there. Another important uh, crop is a bitter goat which is my close to my heart. I work for 22 years in this bitter goat and uh, that is very important for us then we have our own lines in case of bitter goat only five minutes I will take okay. So that lines uh, uh, already we, we, we have given to the private seed companies um, based on this commercialization that is uh, Ankur seeds and the Namdhari seeds and they develop they take it that one only to minimize the cost of production particularly for uh, for uh, this one uh, hybrid seed productions okay. So that they, uh, they took it from us and you can see this uh, bitter gourd if you one side you can see that how many male flowers are there but another side you can see that only the female lines will be there. So it is totally different and with that lines we developed and uh, as I mentioned that why I am telling these lines this is the lines which developed by my one of my student. He is also working as a scientist with me Dr. De he was working with me and that time he first time we are just in the field and we got that line. So as a student very important to go for phenotyping so that is if you are not doing in the properly in the plant itself you cannot get it. So that plants now we have some modification then that was a small type of variety so we make it by the repeated back crossing we make it a, a medium varieties and that we are utilizing uh, for developing the new hybrids. And then we also did it the first time the uh, QTL mapping with respect to different traits in bitter goat. So the one of my students also work on this QTL mapping in this bitter goat and we have already published in the good journal. And this is the information or identifications of the QTLs with respect to different things. And gynecist state also I already mentioned which is the flank to the with the gene of interest uh, is a very uh, tightly linked. And uh, then now we are starting for the uh, mapping of QTLs particular QTL sec methods for the, the uh, trait like foot length, cubicles and other uh, traits in case of bitter goat because bitter goat is now very important for us at least for the medicinal point of view and we now we are working for this different QTL sex methods, uh, QTL sex for different traits in the mapping of these traits and go for marker study uh, selection. And also we started also for SSR markers we did it with the tubercles and we have uh, gene of interest but, uh, but we are going for the fine mapping particularly for developing or the link best markers with respect to the uh, this one. Uh, so we will have a lot of populations with respect to different uh, bitter gourd about 117 uh, core collections I have throughout the world and uh, that lines are totally different and if you have the Indian lines is different from the Chinese, different from Taiwan, different from US lines. So the totally the based on the morphological characters of the fruit shape and size and color and everything will be different. In India you might be knowing that in case of uh, if you go to the south in Kerala they need to have a white type. So we have that white type pure white there is a pearl white type. So that line is very important for us. So that we are also go going for improving the different traits in respect to this one and you can astonish me I have screened about uh, 117 lines since a bit ago the amount of uh, anti-diabetic properties like uh, serantine, saponin, your momodicins are totally different from one, speed, one lines to another lines. And we have a very small footed lines which is very much of 70 microgram of your serantine and compared to the other long footed lines about hardly 5 to 6 microgram of gram wafer fruit types. So that type of things contrasting characters we can have also used for our material to develop that lines having high content of these anti-diabetic properties. So that also we are utilizing. Similarly in case of your bitter gourd as you know that you use only in the green stage but if you ripe stage nobody using okay. So that also very important but ripe stage it is we have seen that the content of the nutrients also different from the uh, fresh stage to the ripe stage. If you see the anti-diabetic uh, properties it reduces when it goes to ripening but the antioxidant like carotenes, lycopene they are increased with when you go for ripening. So in Africa nobody eats in the bitter gourd in the green stage. They eat only in the ripening stage and ripening stage because they are very sweet in taste. 
but if you bitter stage it will be bitter taste. So, we developed some of the lines also in green stage they are very much of sweet not sweet you can say less bitter that is we have one Pusa Rasdar variety which is uh, you can see here the small uh, variety is again here in the left hand side uh, you can say the Pusa Rasdar which is uh, grown only in the poly house which is less bitter compared to the bitter gold what we have in the Indian type and that is having very good yield if you go for uh, growing in the net house conditions or the poly house conditions. So, with that also we validate the markers with respect to the uh, tubercles with the different germplasms of the bitter gold and we also have these things, but the impact of mass in digital uh, crop improvement they have not started uh, till today like, like that of other crops like rice, wheat and other people they have worked many years and many scientists are involved in the respect to this particular trade or of in, uh, in different crops, but in vegetables, vegetables are very high about about 117, 120 vegetables we are growing in India out of which only 35 are very important. Huh? But the working if you say the work in the improvement program only two three institutes are working in the vegetable improvement maybe IHR, maybe IAVR, maybe IARI. But I think very well the people are doing mostly in the conventional way. But when you make a cross you have a large huge amount of population even to get this genes stable for this particular trait also it is very important if you have a huge population. If you go for only marker step selections then only you can have bad or good materials to be selected for that particular purpose. So, that resources of the mass is not available in vegetable crop improvement then genomic information is also not available very I already mentioned the very few people are working in that then inoculation the QTL mapping is also not done properly with respect to we do not have a proper uh, networking projects in case of vegetables like that of rice like the wheat or maize there are a lot of networking projects throughout this country is going on. But if you have a network actual QTL mapping can be done and we can definitely have a better marker stress selections we can do in the vegetable improvement. Then QTLs effect uh, the, the also depends I already mentioned about the genetic background we have a different genetic background definitely the QTLs will be may be different. So, that also we have to take care and uh, lack of markers in polygon fishing because uh, we are not broadening our materials we are losing our materials, but we are just narrowing down our, our materials, but we are not broadening our material. So, there are a lot of future challenges for us particularly for you people if you work there uh, ok you are in now in uh, maybe in some of the crops, but when you go for a scientist maybe you can be appointed in the vegetable breeding or vegetable crop improvement. So, you work on that particular aspect I think the future will be very good and your involvement particularly for the students is very important for us to have a new new lines and I must thank to my own students I have uh, uh, I had already uh, 12 PhD students and 4 MSc student and mostly the people work on cucumber and bitter, bitter gore and most of the publications I, I I really proudly say most of the publications I did it it is from my students and 90 percent of MOS publications in the international journal is by my student. So, that is the spirit you take it from because the last class. So, I should not uh, take much of time of Ranjit is now very much of quick that when sir finished the courses, but anyway and uh, this is the thing. So, my sincere request work hard very sincere if definitely we can have a some dent in any crop improvement program. Thank you very much. Questions? Yeah, please. If you have any any questions, but I don't think uh, now they are already saturated with the things. They don't have any questions. But at least vegetable people, if you have some questions in your background, no. Some basic oh. Related to subject. Yeah. Actually, I am from Bangalore. Hmm. There uh, we grow mostly tomato, tomato, and uh, if there are any um, what. Price, uh, price uh, less price means farmers will throw tomatoes on the roads, and there are many uh, losses from the tomato cultivation. Is there any um, cost effective methods to preserve those uh, products? Yeah, that is a very important question. Now, you see that uh, that, uh, that I, I, I need the improvement is very important for us. Uh, the tomato we are only uh, hardly we are processing. Uh, we are processing hardly about 1.2 percent of your tomato growing in this country, but if you see the other countries they process tomato is much more than 80 90 percent they are processing the tomato. So, if the processed tomato comes if you have a varieties of the particular aspect and as I mentioned about this crop 
if you have some of the lines and you interrogate the lines of processing quality with your own varieties definitely it can be a better chance for you. So, now this uh, top you know tomato onion and program in case of your potato program in case of government of India. So, they now go for top. So, in that program if you have a processing tomato developed now IHR has started working on tomato, but earlier they worked it, but they, they put it in the because uh, the choice and the breeding efforts by the people is totally sometimes different. Now they, they are coming up for the processing tomato, but it, if it had been done for the last so many years I think this potato or this uh, uh, tomato uh, these pro problems can be solved out. This low price sometimes now it is high price now it is 100 rupees in the market. So, that fluctuations is there because we do not have a proper strategy or breeding strategy to develop our own lines with respect to different quality. So, now we are thinking for the processing tomato then we can definitely reduce the cost of production uh, that uh, yes that we can do it ok. Anything? So, if, there are, if there are no more questions then I would like to thank Dr. TK Vera sir for his excellent and lucid presentation on importance of molecular markers and their role in improving vegetation.